so this is another example of your precisional motion when it is not magnetic field but the gravitational field of earth and we are talking about spinning tops or gyroscopes you can see in the animation gyroscopic motion it is the motion of gyroscope so in the same manner nucleus performs motion when they are kept in external magnetic field but instead of this in the shape of gyroscope or in the shape of that spinning top nuclei are considered to be are thought to be spherical in nature now because there is precisional motion circular motion is involved we have to deal with some some physics now it is not difficult don't worry about it all these terms you are very familiar with those omega h0 gamma let's see what are what that physics has to tell about this a motion which appears to be a circular angular so omega is equal to gamma h0 where omega is angular precisional velocity actually it is just angular velocity okay because the a proton is performing precisional motion we are considering it as precisional velocity because we need to consider the precisional motion of precisional motion of that proton precisional motion of that nucleus okay gamma is gyro magnetic ratio it is a nuclear constant it is fixed value for nucleus so for h1 nmr for h1 nucleus it will be a fixed value for c13 for this c13 nucleus it will be a fixed value okay now h0 is applied magnetic field measured in gauss but gamma that is your gyro magnetic ratio it is sometimes also called as a magnet to gyric ratio okay it is 2 pi mu divided by h to i you know what is pi you know what is mu mu is magnetic moment of spinning bar magnet here nucleus is considered as spinning bar magnet it means it is the magnetic moment of the nucleus h is planck's constant and i is spin quantum number i is spin quantum number for that nucleus for that element uh, we will along with what is gamma we will also see what if gamma h0 is equal to it is equal to 2 pi nu now nu is the electromagnetic radiation frequency it is electromagnetic radiation frequency you will also see that it is the right hand side of the first equation it is right hand side of the first equation now why they have come up with this particular equation what happens is the absorption will take place only when omega will be equal to 2 pi nu so if you will consider the first equation and the third equation you will get omega is equal to 2 pi nu which is angular precisional velocity now when that angular precisional velocity omega matches with the frequency of electromagnetic radiation the electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by the nucleus which are in the ground state these are the nuclei which are pointing in the direction of the external magnetic field they are considered to be at the ground state they are considered to have low energy now what happens to them when they absorb when they absorb the energy coming from electromagnetic radiation see this is their original state okay see there is a north pole of the external magnetic field and this is south pole of the external magnetic field so there is a direction in which the south pole and the north pole of the nucleus or the bar magnet which they are considered to be is arranged when they absorb the energy now the north pole of the bar magnet is facing north pole of the external magnetic field same as the south pole they can do it only if they have sufficient energy okay so they are flipped and they are now at high energy level and then energy will be released in the form of electromagnetic radiation radio waves and they will fall back to their ground state and see the south pole is facing the north pole and north pole facing the south pole okay 
when the spin fall back into the line with the magnetic field that is over here it releases energy to detect this energy it provides uh, when we detect this energy uh, it provides information on the environment of the hydrogen in which in the molecule where is that hydrogen or where is the nucleus placed within the molecule it also gives the information how many hydrogen atoms are there in the environment so if you can measure this energy we get we will get two types of information what are types of environment present in the molecule and how many total hydrogens are there in the molecule these two energies we will get now let's see some more physics now let's find out try to find out what is precision frequency now we have an equation over here okay so from that equation we can say that mu the frequency is equal to gamma h0 for 2 pi when h0 value is kept as 14092 gauss <coughs> energy required to cause flipping is calculated as so this value is kept fixed okay for a proton value of gamma is this much so if you can calculate the frequency it comes 60 megahertz that is 60 million cycles per second now 60 megahertz it falls into radio frequency so how much energy we will require to to excite a proton which is in the ground state we will require energy equivalent to radio frequency of 60 megahertz so if you put electromagnetic radiation on a nucleus having single proton and the energy of that electromagnetic radiation is equivalent to energy of 60 megahertz the proton will flip it will change its direction of spinning if we can measure that energy it is going the proton is going in higher energy state and when it falls back to ground state it will again release energy if we can measure that energy we can obtain nmr spectrum so <clears throat> every proton in the molecule will have different ground energy level and different excited energy level they all cannot be at same energy level the reason being they will be in the different environment every proton will feel front strength of external magnetic field because of their environment and because they are experiencing front external magnetic field their precisional frequency will be different because their precisional frequency will be different energy associated with them will be slightly different as they are at a different energy level they will absorb electromagnetic radiation and when they they when they will fall fall back from excited state to their original state they will all of them will uh, will emit <coughs> slightly different energies those slightly different energies will define their nature or i should say the difference in their energies will give us information about their different environments in which they are present so anyway if we can measure it we will get nmr spectra something like this now many of you may recall this from your b farm so different sets of proton will have different precisional frequency they will absorb at different radio frequencies practically it is convenient to keep radio frequency constant and very magnetic field strength it is called as field sweep nmr analysis so we have seen 